Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuck right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Yes, live from the beach today on this Tuesday. Today on the show, Braves need to get these last two games against the New York Mets. Is Aiton going to Indiana good and in trying to land Kevin Durant for the Hawks? And it's a good thing for Ronnie to be in the home run derby. It's all next. It is Hitting Hard with John Chuck right on Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. We welcome you into a Tuesday edition of Hitting Hard with John Chuck. We're here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Asking you to head over to YouTube.com. Put Locked On Sports Atlanta into your search browser when you find us. Hit that subscribe button. Of course, we're free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify and Odyssey. And give me a follow on my personal Twitter page. That would be at JMCH316. Well, you know, look, I, I saw where this was the third largest crowd in Braves history last night. And I said this the other day, did I not? And I thought this would be one of the bigger, more raucous crowds that we saw all year at Truist Park. Did not go the Braves way last night, 4-1. to one. Max Scherzer was outstanding uh, in the game. Max Freed was okay, but he certainly had his issues last night uh, in the game. He kind of labored a little bit, but managed five innings and a couple of runs, but five walks, which is completely uncharacteristic of Max Freed. Scherzer, again, was outstanding. Seven innings, one run, nine strikeouts, and no walks. Now, look, am I going to put too much into one game? No, but... Braves need to find a way to win these next two games. Look, we said this here at the midway point that the division is going to be decided based upon who wins these head-to-head -head matchups with the Braves and the Mets. And this is an opportunity where you have to protect home field. You, you have to protect your home field. You've got them coming in at Truist Park. You've been red hot of late. What have the Braves lost? Only eight games since the 1st of June, right? They've been outstanding. Just swept the Nationals. You're going to play the low-life Nationals coming up here when you get done with the New York Mets. You have to find a way to win this series. And you don't want to give the Mets the momentum and the feel that, okay, all we have to do is line up against the Braves and we know that we can beat them. And, again, you don't want to put in all of the hard work of trying to get back into this division race, being 10 and a half games down, just to line up against the Mets and falter, right? I mean, th this is where the championship pedigree experience of the Braves is supposed to come into play. Now, again, last night you had two aces going at one another, right? You had Max Fried, you had Max Scherzer, you had two guys that are at the top of the rotation for any team in the league going at it. And Freed, uncharacteristically, put five walks up. I mean, I was watching the game. It was just kind of like, yeah, okay, he's not locating very well. Okay, you had a rough night, and you got beat by one of the best in the business. Scherzer's as good a pitcher as there is in Major League Baseball. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. No questions asked about him. Okay, you take that on the chin. Now you come in tonight, and now you got to get it going. Now you have to win these next two games. Does that mean if they don't win the next two games at the series, the season, I should say, is over and it's done? Oh, my gosh. You know, you know, where things are falling out of the sky and it's over for the Braves. No, but this is a chance to send the message, even though you can't take over first place in this series against the Mets, even though you can't, when this is done, find yourself in first place, you send a message. You have to send a message to it. And we'll talk a little bit more about the importance of this here in just a second. But want to tell you about my friends over at rockauto.com. Are you a guy that likes to fix your car yourself? You do a lot of work yourself on your vehicles. You go to that big box store, right? And guess what you're doing? When you go to one of those big box stores, what are you doing? You're spending 30, 50, 100% more for parts than, say, a licensed mechanic would be able to go get, right? Well, listen. RockAuto.com allows you to shop with confidence, find all of the parts that you need, but you get them at the best quality and the best prices that are out there, okay? Doesn't matter what types of parts you're looking for. They have parts for all types of vehicles that are out there. 
go to rockauto.com. That is the place where if you're trying to save time, you're trying to find the best deal on parts, you're trying to find, you know, a family business that's been in business for over 20 years, you want to do business with folks that you can trust, rockauto.com is the place to go. And here's what I want you to do. When you get your order put together on rockauto.com and you go into the where they ask you, how did you hear about us? Okay, there'll be a little box that says, how did you hear about us? I want you to write locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, locked on. Put that in the how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you over to rockauto.com. No matter what kind of car, no matter what kind of truck, no matter what kind of parts you're looking for, rockauto.com is your place to get quality parts at quality prices. So again, am I going to you know, say the season is over if we don't win this series. No, but this is a real chance to send a message. And and it will sort of take away a little bit of what you've been doing of late. If when you line up against the team that matters most in your division, if you kick rocks. Now you sweep, you get swept by the Mets. Okay. That may be a little bit different conversation because this should not be a team that, that you allow to come in to your home field and sweep you. And if you want to talk about a big momentum swing, I definitely think that for the Mets, that's it. Look, they didn't play very well in Miami, and, and they've been criticized like the Braves at times where, oh, you're just beating up teams that are bad and this, that, and the other and all that good kind of stuff, which is true, right? You're not going to line up against the Dodgers and the Padres and the Mets and you know all the good teams that you play. Teams are not going to you – know, even the good teams are not going to line up and win 70% of their games against those teams. The way you get to 95, 100 wins in Major League Baseball is you kick the ever-living crap out of the Washington Nationals, the Miami Marlins, the Kansas City Royals, whatever vagabond franchise that you want that's out there. So <laughs> you, you have to, though, be competitive and you have to play well. And, and really where the Braves have, if you want to talk about the things that they did early on in the season where they've sort of faltered, is that now they've put themselves in a position where – you have to win these games against the Mets, right? If you're going to overtake the Mets in the division, because I don't think the Mets are going to lose a whole lot to the Nationals and the Marlins and those, you know, again, those goofball organizations, those goofball franchises, Arizona, whatever the, the goofball organizations are that are out there. So this division will come down to head to head. And, you know, every time that you lose a game to the New York Mets, you allow them to immediately pick up. You don't have to scoreboard watch when you lose direct head to head to the Mets, right? And and again, this is not about okay, this is not about getting the wild card and being in the wild card standings and all those kinds of things. The Braves are the division champions for 4 years running. The Braves are the World Series champs. They are the world champions here and you have to play and act like it. You flex your muscles a little bit, right? You remind the Mets that they haven't done anything, and you remind the Mets of who the big boy on the block is. You know, this is that street fight that we've been waiting for, that this is that this matchup of the two heavyweights, right? This is your Ali Frazier. This is the two best teams or two of the three best teams in the National League going up against one another, and this is your shot to try to knock them down, and you won't be able to knock them out by any stretch of the imagination, but this is a shot to throw a haymaker, an uppercut, and really kind of stagger them a little bit and make them think that, okay, maybe we're not at the Braves level. And look, they're going to get DeGrom back. We know how good that they've been. They're going to probably add some pieces at the trade deadline, right? They're going to go out there and probably get themselves another bat. They feel like that they need more offensive help. By the way, how funny was it last night watching Robinson Cano line up against the Mets and start last night at second base? Oh, yeah, and he had two hits uh, in the game uh, as well. That little thumb in the eye. See, that's the kind of stuff that when you're the big boys on the block and you're the champs, that's the kind of things that you have to do to the Mets to make them know, hey, listen, we got you. We we we, we know who you guys are. You guys are not in our class. Now you got to go out and get it done on the field. So, look, I think it's important to try to win these next two games for the Braves. I think that they need to send a message that, okay, you got the first one. Your ace was on the mound. We'll give that to you. Now let us show you what we have behind our ace and what the depth of our ball club is. All right, when we come back, if DeAndre Ayton signs with the Indiana Pacers, does that help the Hawks as far as trying to land Kevin Durant? We'll talk about that next. Is hitting hard with John Chuckery on Locked On Sports Atlanta. <laughs> 